And good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. There we go. We're all awake. Um, I want to thank uh, Michael Albert and Donna Stanton, who are our sign language uh, interpreters. And I want to thank Cook County's Chief Medical Examiner, Dr. Runkumar, for joining me this afternoon. On Monday morning at 3.29 a.m., a 46-year-old man was brought to the medical examiner's office. His cause and manner of death are pending at this time. His is the 10,000th, 10,000th case the medical office has, medical examiner's office has handled this year. That's almost 3,800 more cases than all of 2019. Almost 3,800 cases more than 2019, and we're in the eighth month of the year. This caseload is absolutely unprecedented. Since this office transitioned from being a coroner to a medical examiner's office at the end of 1976, there have been three years when the caseload was 10,000 or more decedents. 1977, 1978, and 1979. In 1977, the office recorded its highest number of cases. 10,654 for the entire year. Needless to say, we're on track to exceed that milestone. Dr. Runkumar and I have stood here before you many times this year. Each time we've reached another troubling milestone. Each time we hope the trends would reverse themselves, unfortunately they have not. This past week, we surpassed 5,000 COVID-19 related deaths in Cook County, 5,000. Almost 600 residents have been murdered this year. The office estimates that we've handled more than 1,400 opioid related deaths and more than 282 of our residents have taken their own lives. These numbers point to a harsh reality as we come closer to the end of 2020. And once again, the burden is being felt disproportionately in communities of color. While a quarter of our county's population is African American, about 24%, close to 43% of the cases this office sees are African American residents. 33% of those who succumb to the coronavirus are black. Approximately half of those who've died of an opioid overdose are black. More members of this community have committed suicide in Cook County this year than all of 2019. But the most staggering statistic remains the rate at which our black neighbors die at the hands of others. Three quarters of the homicides in Cook County are committed against members of the black community. When you factor in Latinos, that number climbs to almost 94%. The numbers are clear. Our black and brown communities are still the hardest hit. The majority of these residents lived in underserved, under-resourced neighborhoods. They had less access to healthy foods, safe streets, and quality health care. But regardless of race or ethnicity, every single one of the more than 10,000 deaths that have come under the jurisdiction of the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office this year has something in common. As Dr. Runkumar has said on more than one occasion, each one was preventable. As a community, we must do better. These aren't just names on a page. These are our neighbors, our friends, our family. I am grateful to Dr. Runkumar and her team here at the Medical Examiner's Office for their tireless efforts over the last eight months under extraordinary circumstances. Thank you for your dedication and commitment to these residents during a challenging time. Dr. Runkumar. Good afternoon. Thank you, President Preckwinkle, for your continued support of our office and for your leadership during this very difficult time. This morning, the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office 
took jurisdiction over our 10,057th case for the year. We keep comparing 2020 to previous years, but the truth is there is no comparison. When we look back on our caseload in the late 70s, the raw numbers do not give us a true picture of what our ex office experienced. As President Preckwinkle told you, our office handled more than 10,000 cases annually between 1977 and 1979, but our jurisdiction was much broader in those days, covering more natural debts for which our office signed the death certificates. These debts did not need an autopsy or detailed review by a pathologist. Today, our scope is much more focused, which makes present day numbers m more jaw dropping. If for the remainder of 2020, our caseload stabilized to the levels we have experienced over the last several years, we would still double last year's entire caseload. While COVID deaths make up approximately half the medical examiner's cases this year, deaths in other categories are soaring. If we took the COVID deaths out of the equation, our office would be on track to match our caseload in 1995, the year of the Chicago heat wave. We are seeing unprecedented numbers of opioid overdoses. We estimate, we've already estimated all of last year's opioid deaths by more than 100. If the current trend continues, we would see as many or more than 2,000 opioid deaths this year. As of this morning, the county stands at 594 homicides. That is just 81 shy of last year's total of 675. This puts our county dangerously close to homicide numbers in 2016, where we surpassed 900 homicides. We're also seeing 63 suicides so far in the black community, which has exceeded the total of last year's number with four months still left this year. We hope the data we collect can assist us and our partners in public health, healthcare, and law enforcement and our journalists to, lead, to help us lead to solutions that are plaguing our community. We're grateful to all those who have worked with our staff analyzing information and bringing greater awareness throughout our county and the country. We thank you and we encourage you to continue the work with our staff. Our office has the distinction of being one of the busiest in the nation. While I'm proud of the work we do and the effort we put in, I'm always disheartened by how many patients we see. Unlike other medical offices, there are no happy endings here. As we continue to establish cause and manner of death for all those under our care, we remember always they did not have to die in this way. I would like to take this opportunity to express my gratitude to the dedicated pathologists, investigators, forensic technicians, and the support staff at the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. They have all worked long hours under a great deal of pressure to ensure that every patient under our care is dealt with with dignity and respect. Each individual is part of someone's family and we treat them like they're part of our own family. Thank you. Again, my thanks to Dr. Runkumar. Dr. Runkumar? Yes, w there, there is an increase in the number of deaths in Co Cook County along with what we are seeing uh, in our office. The COVID is the largest. There's also an increase in the number of opioid deaths we are seeing. And this is what our office already is saying, but that would be uh, seen in the Cook County statistics as well.
they're preventable because, for example, with the opioid deaths, these are um, decedents who are taking opioids for pleasure and uh, not knowing maybe that these are dangerous drugs. So with education, uh, I think the number of these cases can definitely be much reduced. Greg from the Tribune, are you still on the line? All right, Greg, could you start at the beginning again because we didn't have the vo volume on the phone high enough to hear you. Okay, um, so the statistics I have are for 1919, the total cases dealt with by this office were 6,274. The homicides were 675. The opioid overdoses, 1,266, with 13 cases still pending. Suicides, 477. For 2020, so that was the entire 2019. Total cases so far, 10,061. That is uh, almost 4,000 more than total cases last year, the entire year. Homicides, 594. Opioid overdoses, 952, with 614 cases pending. Suicides, 282. I think the point of the press conference is to call attention to the challenges we're facing um, in our county. And um, as Dr. Runkumar has said, uh, these deaths are preventable. If we're talking about murders or opioid deaths, uh, not to mention the, the deaths related to the pandemic, uh, as well as suicides. Do we have any other reporters on the line that like to ask any on-topic questions? Are there any other reporters on the line besides Greg? Okay, hearing none. Off topic questions? I got off easy. Well, let me begin by saying, you know, <laughs> I live in a country where black and brown people have been and continue to be murdered by the police with impunity. They also are shot by the police with impunity. And that is a profound and troubling challenge in this country. It reflects the endemic racism of our nation. Having said that, um, I'm a big believer in nonviolent protest, a big believer in nonviolent protest. And while I understand the rage and frustration that many feel, uh, we can't resort to violence as a way of expressing our outrage. Fortunately for us, we don't have the same militia problems as Wisconsin does. And um, I frankly am unfamiliar with the, the involvement of the militia last night, so I shouldn't comment on it. <laughs> 